everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I have the July upgrade here to unbox, take a look at and maybe do a little bit of arting with as well. So Upcrate is a monthly art subscription box from Germany and it follows quite a standard formula of providing a group of art supplies that work well together. A magazine that talks a little bit about the supplies, tips, techniques and a little bit of inspiration. We also get a featured artist for some more inspiration. And we also get given an art prompt so that we can use the supplies to challenge ourselves and make something that fits the prompt. And here is our featured artist. And what, that's what Upcrate calls the co-captain. And this is Alan M Art. And obviously we've got, so, oh, this, right, okay, this looks like paint. It looks like possibly gouache. And we've got some really nice bookmark dimension artworks here. I think these are lovely. I really like this kind of thing. Something a little bit different. So on the back here is some more of the artists were all, wow, look at this one. And they are on Instagram. So here is their handle down here. Now I noticed the paper feels different. Upcrate did talk about changing the paper so that we could keep a magazine and that is much more lightweight. It's not the sort of thicker, glossier paper we had before, which is absolutely 100% fine. But this is really nice and the colour palettes here really appeal to me as well. Uh, the gradient in this guy is lovely. I do love a good gradient. And we've got our little set of stickers here as well. <laughs> I always love it because the co-captains do their own version of the Upcrate logo and I always really like them because the, some of them are quite imaginative and this one's lovely. So here is our bottle post. This is a magazine that comes in the box. I'm not sure if the paper's any different in this one, but we'll look at this later. We'll check out the supplies first. Okay, so as suspected, we have two bookmark... Oh no, telling lies. Three bookmark dimension sheets of paper. It is quite thick. It looks like cold press watercolour paper just by the texture on it. It's fairly thick. I would say that's 250 GSM anyway. Um, so it's nice that we've got three. So we've got one to test our supplies out on, one to make a mess of and then one to do <laughs> a final image on. So that's really good as well. Oh, I think I've had a leakage or something. Something has leaked. Okay, so we've got a plastic paint palette here with uh, five wells and five, come on plastic, and five sloped wells as well for mixing. Um, seems fairly sturdy, fairly good quality. Personally not a huge fan of plastic palettes, I tend to use ceramic ones. We've got some washi tape, some folio washi tape, it's got a nice little um, foil polka dot pattern on it there, so that's good, that could be tape down our paper. Uh, fine gouache and this is burnt sienna. Now I think it's actually the tube that's punctured down at the bottom because there's no leakage at all around the top. There is a massive dent in it and um, so that's obviously not survived the journey from Germany terribly well. And I've also got cyan as well. Burnt sienna and cyan, mm, okay. I've got a funny feeling that this is another one of these boxes where everyone gets a random colour selection. I've also got white as well and this is Talon's gouache, so a different brand. Again, pretty battered and dented. And it just says white, it doesn't tell me whether it's a pure white or... Okay, right, that's fine. And I've got Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic. I love this stuff. This is amazing. Heavy Body Acrylic's a really uh, thick composition and it kind of stands up in the paper. It's like whipping cream. It's really, really good fun to work with. But I've got a light blue, so I have absolutely been done in terms of colours because I've got cyan and white and I've got a light blue and I've got burnt sienna. So when you see things like this... It, it's really inspiring, you know, I just talked about colour palettes, so to be given this, this is like really underwhelming. We've also been given a paintbrush as well, um, this is a little Lucas paintbrush, uh, number two, and it's, I think it's supposed to be a filbert, it's kind of small, it's kind of hard to tell, uh, it might just be a flat brush where the sides have been squashed in a bit, it's not rounded enough at the top to be a filbert, I don't think, kind of hard to tell, synthetic bristles, so really good for gouache and acrylic as well. I don't know how we're going to get on with heavy body acrylic with 
a paintbrush this size, I imagine this is going to be quite challenging, but we shall see. So first impressions on the supplies, I'm not really that impressed to be honest. I like gouache, I've tried quite a few brands of gouache, by no means an expert, um, but these are brands I have not tried, so that's quite nice as well. So let's see what's happening, and it looks like we're going to be pushed towards doing um like a landscape type prompt as well. So basically I've got some burnt earth and some sky and maybe some water. Uh, okay, we'll see. So here's a little introduction there. Oh look, somebody's got lovely colours like yellow and green. Lucky them. <laughs> oh, bitter, honestly. Okay, so we're talking about the gouache. A uh, mix of 12 different colours. You have two in your box. Okay, yes, yeah, so I've absolutely been bumped on the colours. Uh, the bu the bourgeois linel 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 gouache, seventy eight colours of extra fine pigments and gum arabic of the highest quality as a binder. Colours are unique, extra fine and smooth. Water colours with maximum colour intensity. They're not water colours. The highly opaque colours have excellent brilliance, brilliance and brightness and are ideal for designers. The whole point of gouache is that it is opaque but as it's water-based it can be watered down and you can get that kind of watercolor-ish feel with it but it was originally designed to be used as bold opaque color similar to like kids poster paints so everybody's got the sky blue liquitex heavy body acrylic Heavy body colours have a buttery, flexible consistency and oil-like painting properties. That's probably a better way to describe it than the way I described it. Brush strokes and painting knife marks remain after drying. With a high concentration of light, fast, artist-grade pigments and a satin finish, Liquitex Heavy Body offers rich colours in 105 shades. It does say at the bottom here, due to supply shortages, it may be that a few of you have the ultramarine blue in the box. Okay, so th that's quite similar though. Um, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And obviously if you have supply chain issues, there's only so much you can do. There's a huge difference between doing that and giving someone a blue when you've already got blue and a white so you can make the same shade and a burnt sienna. Um, okay, the talons gouache. This is extra fine. Top quality gouache with 60 colours. The opacity of the paint is obtained by using opaque fillings. Gouache is often used by designers and illustrators and hobby artists, so obviously. Okay, let's talk about the paintbrush. It's a flat brush, it's not a filbert, okay. Uh, <laughs> the gold tray flat, universal brushes with very good elasticity, ideal for thin bodied paints and hobby acrylic paints. See again what I said about the heavy body acrylic, we might not get on too well with that. I feel as if it's just going to glob up on the end. These brushes have a seamless through, short unvarnished natural wood style handle and are ideal for oil, acrylic and gouache painting. I like our washi tape. Hand tear rice paper tapes with transparent frosted surfaces suited to lettering and drawing, self-adhesive film which allows removal and repositioning. So yeah, if you're not familiar with washi tape, I'm sure most of you are, it's it's like almost like a low tack masking tape, but they're usually pretty, you know, designs on them. Um, they're great for taping down watercolour paper though and looking cute at the same time, but they do have a lot of other applications obviously as well. But the, one of the best things about them is because they're low tack, if you tape off an area of your painting, you can remove that and adjust it slightly, you know, if maybe if you've got slightly the wrong angle and it tends to be a bit kinder to the paper than more sticky adhesive tapes. The plastic palette, 10 cups, I've already explained that. Okay, uh, the paper is Artspace watercolour paper and it's 300 GSM and it's cold pressed. So it's particularly suitable for watercolour painting so that your works of art will turn out optimally. Each watercolour sheet has two different surfaces, a rough surface that's suitable for painting with watercolour or acrylic and a smooth surface that can be used for hand lettering, sketching or calligraphy. This, she allows, to, this allows you to use your art space watercolour paper for different applications and also as acrylic paper. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's just the manufacturing process and one side is really knobbly bobbly and the other side is a little bit smoother. Okay, and here is our co-captain. I'm I'm really warming to her art. These are absolutely lovely. Uh, obviously, she's quite a fan of uh, using her natural surroundings, as she's seeing up here. So there's a little bit about her there and a little interview as well as more examples of her work as well. Yeah, these are lovely. Co-captain quick tips. Okay, so we're talking specifically about the paint here. Gouache is super versatile. If you want a pigmented acrylic look, use less water. If you prefer the watercolour look, use as much water as you like. When combining acrylic and gouache paints, which we will be doing at some point because we have this, 
Take advantage of the different properties of the two media. Acrylic paint is non-reactive and stays no matter how many times you paint over it. The situation is different with gouache. This can be reactivated with water. For example, you can correct small mistakes by slightly moistening the brush. But at the same time, you must be careful not to smear the lower layers when painting over them. Use acrylic as a bottom layer, then gouache on top. If you do paint gouache on gouache, try to use as little water as possible. If you don't have black available, mix all the colours you can find together to create the darkest tone possible. If you want to create a gradient, for example with sky, don't blend the two colours directly together, but use some white to blend them. This can avoid unwanted muddy mid-tones. Okay, here we have our art hacks section with Critzel Pixel. And this section is really good for giving you hints and tips and trying out different techniques as well. There's a fair amount here on different techniques and the actual technical properties of the gouache as well. So if it's a new medium to you, there's plenty of information here to help you out and get you started. Our sailor of the month is Eva. And you can see some of her artwork here. This is stunning. Absolutely stunning. I really like this one. So Denise is not only an artist, she's an educator as well. And we can see some of her artwork and learn a little bit more about her too. A little bit of advice here. If you could talk to your younger self, what advice would you give them? Love it. And she's also given us a step by step as well to create a little gouache painting. And this is really nice. That's cute. Really like that. It's very, very simple, but very effective. So they're actually giving examples here of work that can be created with certain colours uh, that you've been given. They're saying here that it's due to supply issues. And... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's great. There, there you go. Somebody else has got a bit of a donkey up here as well. That's almost the same as mine. Now, this is all very fair and well, but I don't have a dark blue. <laughs> oh, this is funny. I've, I've got to laugh at this. I do say that I like to be challenged, so I really shouldn't complain so much. <laughs> okay, so here's Emily, and um, she does the, the, um, the, the sort of initial process and she goes through this stage here where she does her colour feel and you know you get some examples and that kind of, I love this section because if you're absolutely void of any sort of inspiration for the actual battle prompt uh, this is really 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 helpful and plus as well you get to learn about colour theory along the way. Okay little tips for everyone so we have more featured artists again look at this this kind of reminds me of the artwork from the rayman games i just that just struck me there i don't know why and we've got a little step by step here as well which is really nice okay the upgrade battle this is the winners from come together and that was the one where we had the paint pens and the four sheets of paper that went together and this is absolutely deserving of the winner this is amazing this is really cool i really really like this all of them are really good, actually. I like all of them. Really good imaginations for stuff like this. Well done, guys. I really like that. Okay, and this is the prompt to let it out. This one is by far my favourite. So that's from the May box as well. Really nice. Okay, so they've got a new feature. They've got an online workshop. A monthly online workshop with professional artists for the monthly box. That's pretty good as well cut out area okay so if you want to keep some of these artworks for yourself they've just put them there for you and you're not losing the rest of your your bottle post so on the back here oh this is like um oh this has been stuck on i think there's been maybe a printing error and they've covered it up um that, yeah that's like a sticker that's been put on there anyway okay the prompt is nature is art so kind of as expected nature theme Okay, uh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm, uh, I'm going to be challenged this month. I'm going to be able to create a dark tone by whacking together loads of burnt sienna and the cyan. And I'm probably going to get some nice paler shades of these just because I've got the white. I'm just, I'm really disappointed that I've got these two. Even if I'd had a, a pale gouache or, you know, like maybe a turquoise gouache and the ultramarine heavy body acrylic, that would have made all the difference. We're going to quickly test out the supplies and maybe sketch out some quick ideas in my sketchbook and then we're going to see what we can do with this upgrade battle. 
Okay, so I've got a nice little set up here and you can see the washi tape's absolutely lovely, it's gorgeous. So I have switched out the plastic palette for this um, ceramic one. I'm just gonna keep this as is and I'm sticking that in the stash shop. So if anybody's looking for a palette with bigger wells, you can head over to the website, which is here, and you can pick yourself up a little bargain and obviously there's other stuff there in the shop for you to peruse. I've also got uh, some water to clean my brush in as well as some clean water, a rag to wipe my brushes off on as well and a spare can just in case. So the idea here is these top two panels is either side of the paper, so this is the smooth side and this is the rough side and then I've got one of the full bookmark pieces down the bottom here and this is so that I can start doing a bit of colour mixing and just figure out how far I can make these paints stretch, which let's face it, it's not going to be all that far, but we're going to try anyway, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to start with the acrylic and I'm going to put that in this one just because it's not gouache. Um, so I have the uh, the light blue, some of you may have the, I think it was ultramarine if I remember rightly, and that's quite a pretty colour, I like that a lot. So the idea here is just to see how it's going to go down on the paper. That is, uh, that's pretty smooth. And with this being heavy body, uh, we do want to see if it's going to hold its shape once it's dry. So I'm going to blob a bit of texture down there as well. So I'm just going to see what happens if I actually dilute this with a little bit of water. So a pipette there, squish a bit in there. And you can see that that's actually, if I just bring this over, you can see that that's actually diluted out. So we can use it in that form. How useful that's going to be, I don't know. But that's going to give us... Um, a little bit of room for manoeuvre, you know, because I'm thinking I'm maybe going to use this for like a sky or like a river background or something like that. Um, and maybe get a little bit of texture in there. So if I want to water it down, um, obviously once you put water on the paper, you can add more paint to it. Um, it feels different underneath your hand, like you can feel that it's the rough side of the paper. And I do see that it's kind of clinging onto the brush marks a little bit more. Again, that's just the texture, because when I put that first stroke down on this side, it, it felt like I was using a marker, you know, it just kind of went across the paper. But here you can really feel that there's a bit more going on underneath there. So again, let's uh, let's just splodge a wee bit down. Okay, so let's look at these colours and their neat form. Um, I'm really hoping this burnt sienna's got quite a lot of red in it. By the bit that's leaked out at the bottom, it does look that way, which, uh, which is which is nice. Um, so I'll squish some of that in there. Oh, these tubes are quite. Oh my goodness, that's just squirted everywhere. Oh God, this is, it's actually everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Um, well, we might as well just use that to our advantage. This is the neat burnt sienna. <laughs> Um, uh, and that's quite wat watery. Oh, you do have to give gouache a good bit of a mix. Uh, sometimes the pigment separates from the binder in the tube and you get a kind of more watery equivalent. Oh, lordy. <laughs> Let me just mix what's in the, the pan here so you can see there. <laughs> Sorry, that really tickled me. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Uh, you can see the kind of consistency we're talking about. It is quite thick. Um, and if we just give that a little bit of a mix... Ideally, you want to do this with another brush so that you're not overloading the, the brush with the, the gouache, but um, we're fine. Okay, there we go. So that's a bit better. So let me take some of this off. So on the uh, on the smooth side, again, it actually feels much the same as the, uh, as the acrylic did. And uh, yeah, there's not too much of a difference there, to be honest. And I, I would say that's a fairly... Um, a fairly true sort of brilliant white. It is whiter than the paper, I know that you can't really see it, but uh, in, in natural, I've got natural light coming in from the window as well as the studio lights, and uh, yeah, that's, if I build that up a little bit there, it's it's actually whiter than the paper, so I would say that that's it's definitely closer to a brilliant white than anything else. So I'm going to let those dry off, and I'm going to start trying to mix some colours down on this bottom swatch here. I want to try and grab a little bit of the burnt sienna and mix mix a little bit of the cyan in and even if this gives me um, a sort of darker shadowy colour um, that's not too muddy then I will be more than happy. But also now we can mix in some white with this. So what we can do is we can have various um, you know, you could do like an almost tonal scale of every colour with the white. I'm actually kind of going into grey there almost. So we've got some variation there straight away. Okay, so I'm actually almost into like a 
a, like a pinky tone there. So that's quite nice. We do have quite a lot of variation and obviously there's stages in between that as well and you can mix it to suit you, uh, you know, really look at the, the, the tidy quantities to, to do that for you. So let's take a look at the blue now as well. Then we're coming into a sky blue-ish tone here. Now the interesting thing is, even as I'm lightening this up and I'm just adding more and more white, when you see it next to the acrylic paint, the acrylic has got a lot more green in it. So if I just zoom out just now, can you see the difference here from up here? This looks a lot more turquoisey, so that's good as well. So we've, we've still got a little bit of variety in the colours available to us, despite two of them being very close together. Not entirely the end of the world. It wouldn't be the, the selection of colours I would have liked, obviously. Green or being the, having the ability to mix green would have been nice, uh, because you all know I like to, to do trees and things like that, or none of that today. Unless, of course, we were to do, like a, do a picture like that with a, a limited colour palette but let's just uh, let's, let's keep things simple. So the other thing that I want to try now as well now that some of this is dry up here hopefully or nearly dry is just the opacity and I just want to see how much that's actually going to cancel that out because it looks really good just now and we'll do a little stripe across here across the blue too. So because of the opacity of these paints technically we shouldn't have to worry too much about the colours mixing together actually on the paper. So again, if I just take a little bit of the, the neat sienna. Now obviously the more you dilute this or the more that you mix it with other colours, the less of an impact that's going to have. But I should be able to put that sienna over the top of the blue and the sienna not to be affected at all by the cyan colour. And you can see there that's going down great as well. Um, the, oh goodness me, the, the acrylic's taken a little while to dry, um, so I think we're maybe going to have to do that as a background and then wait a little while. This part up here is dry on the, on the smoother, uh, on the rough side. So let's just see what happens when we put paint on top of that and the answer is exactly what we would want to happen. And that is the gouache is just sitting on top of the acrylic and has not been affected by anything. So again, we'll just do this with the cyan and I'm going to do it over the heavy body part, you know, where we've actually put down quite a lot of the acrylic. And that's going grand as well. So all in all, um, the, the paints are nice. They feel nice. They feel good quality. The gouache that I would normally use is the Windsor and Newton gouache, uh, the, de the designer's gouache, which for, for the, the amount that I use, gouache is absolutely fine. It's, it's great stuff. And this feels very similar to it actually, uh, just the consistency and what happens when you mix it and you've actually got it in your brush and the way it goes down. So there's no doubting the quality of these supplies, which to be fair, nine times out of 10 upgrade usually do supplies with high quality artist grade materials. So I'm quite happy with these. They do have light fast ratings, which is nice as well. It tells you on the back of these ones, there's the little, st oh, I forgot that one's leaking. Oh no. Um, there's the star ratings on the back of these ones here and on this tube, on the talons one, it's on the front as well. So that's really good to know. So if you do create anything wonderful and you're really proud of it and you want to hang it on the wall, it's not going to fade in the sunlight. Okay, so now that I've got my range of swatches, I am quite happy. I'm going to take these off, let them dry and I'm going to set up to do our upgrade battle now. Okay, so just to get me started off here, I've just taken, this is the neat acrylic paint. And I'm covering this whole top section, the, the undiluted, untouched raw colour. And I've chosen the textured side of the paper and it's purely preference. I like textured paper. And in the bottom half here, um, I've diluted the, uh, I'm using the diluted acrylic. I'm not being particularly careful, obviously. Okay, so this is nice and dry now, so we can move to our next step. I would say we've had some casualties with my burst tube here and uh, some of them I'm going to try and rescue. So I've got this kind of mishmash here. Um, so when we're thinking about backgrounds, we think about things that are far away and uh, they tend to be a little bit paler if they're off in the distance. So I'm just mixing up, just taking from what I did when I did the swatch in there. Um, there's no point in wasting paint, but I'm going to scoop all this up. Now I want to try and keep this texture as smooth as possible here because, say, it is off in the background, it's not the focal point of our piece. A little bit of, of detail here. Again, you don't want to go crazy with this because, obviously, it's in the background. I'm trying to think about the proportions of the paper here as well. So I do want, you know, I don't want to be to, to be too lopsided. This is kind of hard work with this little brush, I have to say. 
And just taking straight from the tube with the acrylic, I just want to add in a little bit of texture. So I'm just basically going to like splodge some of this heavy body acrylic down. I'm using quite a dry brush here as well. They give that feeling of a sort of slightly lighter sky. And with this greyish colour that I'd mixed up before, I'm just going to start putting in a little bit of texture. Again, quite quite a dry brush here and it's intentional, obviously. Pick up some of the texture of the paper as well. Okay, next I'm taking a little bit of white and uh, I'm going to water it down. So it's going to give it that sort of, sort of cloudy look. And then as we come closer to the foreground here, so in amongst um, these sort of textured parts that we've got with the the heavy body acrylic, just going to pop in some little lines there. Okay, so now we're just going to get the outline down of our stack of rocks. So I'm going to use the Burnt Sienna for this. The bottom one quite flat maybe. And we can kind of make these shapes anything we want, you know, we can we can entirely make this up as we go along. Maybe that one's got a bobbly bit that sticks out. Maybe there's a little skinny one in there. So when deciding on the height here, I did want it to go above this, uh, this skyline just because, well, you've got that nice contrast with, with what's going on behind. And so there we go, we have our rock stack. So I've just given my palettes a quick clean. I just want to start with some uh, some fresh mixes here. So just starting with this darkest colour here, I'm going to start adding in some shadow and having a flat brush for this is perfect. So I'm just following the outline there of what I've already done. Try and follow the shape of my stone a little bit and then we can bring this out. So I'm just thinking about the shadows here first of all where the, the stones are stacked on top of one another. So managing to get some real precision here. So now we want to add a little bit of texture and the best way to do that I'm going to take some of the Burnt Sienna and to both of these colours now, so the darker colour that I was just using and the Burnt Sienna, I'm going to add white to both of these. So that's given us that nice greyish tone that we mixed and almost that kind of like sepia colour. So the light's coming from this sort of direction so if we think about that in itself and again, we don't want this to be too uniform. <laughs> I haven't dropped a paintbrush for ages. That's the first time that's happened in a while. That's tickled me a little bit. And we could get some quite angular parts too. Now this is kind of almost spherical, this one. So I'm going to take a more sort of traditional curvy, curvy approach to that one. Okay, so I want to get some um, definition here. So I'm going to keep this brush again quite dry. But just round these edges, this is obviously going to be the side that's in shadow. And that's helping to separate that out from the background where these stones have started out as well. So as I'm going along here, I'm pulling in some of the darker colour into where I've mixed the white in. So that I am getting a bit more of a contrast here. I always find with things like this, I just tend to, you know, once I've got the basics of where I want everything, I can kind of go back and just play about with it and, you know, dot some more bits in. And I, I get a lot of pleasure out of that. And I do that a lot when I'm painting and drawing trees as well. And it's one of the reasons I really like painting and drawing trees. Like, I feel like I've got a lot of freedom with it. And I'm kind of getting that feeling here as well. And it's one of the reasons that I mainly, you know, just with my general subjects, um, I tend to pick things in nature because it's less regimented and you've got more of that freedom. I do want a couple of wee highlights, but obviously I don't want them to look shiny. But maybe there's a little bit of water or something on there, you know, maybe there's a bit little glistening. So I'm just taking some more white back into this slightly pinkier mixture. I have to say that the brush is standing up a lot better than I thought it would. Um, I kind of thought that it might struggle slightly, but... We seem to be doing okay. Uh, there, are, there is a little bristle poking out at the side. Um, it's a bit traumatised. But uh, I can smooth it back in. Oh dear. A traumatised bristle. There we go. That's a new one. So just by the way I've been adding things in here, I think I've given it a much stronger, uh, you know, like feel of sunlight hitting it. So I think I'm going to have to make this bottom shadow here a little bit more dramatic. But I'll deal with that in a minute. 
I am quite happy with this. I didn't think I was going to be, but that's turned out surprisingly well. I think I would have liked a little bit more contrast and if I'd had uh, more paint, I mean, I could keep mixing in some of the, um, some of the cyan with the the burnt sienna but I think it's just wasting paint at this point I think I've kind of like I've portrayed what I need to portray if you see what I'm saying <laughs> so I think I'm going to go with that now this is my my favorite part we've got a nice well I've got a nice crisp edge bar one tiny little splodge down here but I'll let that one slide and there we have it. So uh, despite a, a, very, a very limited colour palette in this case, we've still managed to pull off some mixing sorcery and create something that has quite a lot of contrast in it and something that also has a little bit of interest in it, as well as it being in this particular format. So for once, uh, from a sceptical start, I'm actually quite pleased with this. I'm very satisfied. Uh, I kind of want to make that little bit higher up there but I think I'm just pushing my luck. So overall uh, this box I've already said about the paints not going to talk about that again the quality of the paints is very good and the paintbrush held up a lot better than I thought it would and um, it's still doing okay. How long it would last I don't know see I've got a couple of wayward bristles there already but all in all I think this is a good box. I like the fact that they've changed the paper format and I think for other people that have maybe got different paint combinations this is an excellent box and the prompt as well is is very wide nature is art so you know there's I think there's something for everyone in this box I think it's the best way to put it so I would love to hear your thoughts I'm sure by now you've all done your upcrate battles because this is very late I'm very behind with these videos because of my elbow but I would love to hear your thoughts on this box and also about your upcrate battles as well so I just want to thank you very much for watching thanks for coming and hanging out as always I appreciate it very much and I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video so have a great day everyone and bye bye for now